Welcome, beautiful humans and non-humans. I totally don't judge. I'm Exa, and lately I've been doing a lot of fun shoe creating projects. Be sure to check out my three-part series on making a pair of boots, and there's also some other videos about using a sewing machine for leather and some other fun leather bags and wallets and things, too, that you can look at. But for this video, we are, in fact, preparing to make my pair of leather heels from scratch. But before we can do that, we need to modify these heel lasts that I bought online because they are a little bit too wide for my feet. So with the help of my amazing dad, we are going to trim them down so that way they will fit my feet perfectly. All right guys, so the first thing I did was just draw the shape that I wanted to trim it to with a Sharpie on the shoe. I'm using my pair of rock studs as a guide to kind of get the pointedness and width that I like. So definitely use whatever shoes fit um, the width of your foot the best for this because that way you know that the shoes you're going to make are also going to fit you pretty well. Huge shout out to my dad um, for basically doing this entire process for me while I just walked around behind him with a camera. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So here we're using the bandsaw and he's just trimming along that shape to get the bulk of the material off. If you're only making slight, small adjustments, then you don't have to um, worry about um, using a bandsaw for this. You can just go ahead and use um, some smaller sandpaper and electric files. So if you look kind of from the side profile, you'll see that we're trying to keep that bottom part of the shoe um, flat against the bandsaw at a 90 degree angle, um, and that's just going to make your cuts more uniform. Alright, so now that we've gotten the bulk of the material off, we obviously have this really flat line that is not shoe shaped at all. So we are going to um, start filing that down with so first to get the bulk of the material off and kind of smooth out that rigid line from cutting it with the bandsaw, um, we are just using this big sander here. Um, be careful with this because the shoe material is like kind of a soft gummy material um, and this will take a lot of material off quickly if you push too hard. So do take your time kind of getting that first shaping done. So next we moved on um, to doing kind of the more fine detail work and removing less material um, per, you know, swipe across it. So my dad is actually using a air tool um, rotary wheel that has a sandpaper bit on it. Um, if you know anything about like doing nails, it's basically an oversized e-file for um, doing acrylic nails. So that's the world that I live in and the stuff I know about so I can make that comparison. Um, but anyway, he's just kind of going over and smoothing out the area and eyeballing it to get the shape that we want. Alright guys, so here we are part way um, trying to figure out how much curve we need to add. So, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, put it next to the shoe to kind of gauge um, the level of curve that we want. So like we can turn it on its side. Um, this is probably not the best shoe to be using because the rock studs are very, very low side. Um, but I'm going to say we want to angle it a little more. So definitely take your time and do little pieces, um, you know, and then check it and see how the shape looks. Um, compare it to your example shoes and then, you know, file a little more because obviously if you take too much off, you can't put it back. And we definitely don't want to end up with lasts that are now too small. Ta-da! So now we have um, one of them cut down, so it's time to work on the second shoe and then make sure they are symmetric. Pretty close. I want to stay a little on the far side of the line, because the line's disappearing underneath this one. So just like with the first shoe, um, we are going to go ahead and trim off the bulk of the excess material with this bandsaw and then work on filing and smoothing it out next. Um, for the second one, my dad is staying to the outside edge of that line that I drew um, because obviously it's better to leave a little extra material and have to sand it down to make sure that the two shoes match. Um, if you've ever had shoes that were two different sizes, 
it's so annoying and you can feel it on your feet so we definitely want to make sure that these guys are going to be the same from foot to foot or at least close enough that I'm not going to notice it when I'm wearing them. And smooth that uh, radius out and pull it in. I want it I wanted to leave it a little little thicker here because that was disappearing under your pattern on, mm -hmm. on, the, on the other shoe on this part. So now I'll go ahead and bevel this down. Let me straighten this edge just a little bit like I did on the other one, and then I'll uh... so just take your time sanding little pieces away um, until you get the shapes relatively matched. And then again, we're going to go back in with our oversized nail file and uh, finish shaping it out. You are definitely going to need some patience because, oh my god, it took forever to file these down to the specific shape we wanted. We filed, and then we filed some more, and then we filed some more, um, but we did finally get to a result that we liked. So while my dad was filing and I wasn't filming, I was standing here in the breeze, um, coming from the air compressor and pretending that I was in a hair commercial. God, I am so lame, but it was so fun. But enough about me, back to the project at hand, and my dad is, you guessed it, still filing away on my shoes. I gotta say, he is probably the best dad ever because I literally bring him the weirdest projects that he has nothing to do with and has no idea about and thinks I'm absolutely crazy for doing, but he doesn't say I'm crazy. He just says, okay, sure, and then sits there and spends a couple hours figuring out how to solve the problem that I have proposed. And naturally, because we were in a garage full of Corvettes, we had to break out the toys and my dad started up his vet for us. If you, if you are curious about this specific car that my dad built, stay tuned to the end of the video because he's going to talk about it. Now we will work on the shoes some more. I think we are almost done filing these bad boys down. This one's got a little more curve in it than this one does. See, this is a little too steep and then curves over, so I gotta cut that one a little bit more. So you definitely do want to follow my dad's advice and make sure that you are comparing the two shoes head on um, to make sure that the curves are gonna be the same on both shoes. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. And we're done. So now they have been filed down to the correct size for the width that I like for my feet. So stay tuned for the video next week and you will see me actually turn them into a pair of shoes. So as it turns out, it was super duper easy to modify these glass and make them a little smaller so that way they will fit my feet. And it's a total cost savings as well because you can buy used glass online and if they're a little bit too big, you can just modify them yourself at home. And this will work for any shaped glass if you need to make them um, more narrow or a little shorter in the toe or the heel um, or make the arch a little higher. Anything that involves removing material from a last, you can do using this process. A lot of lasts, if you buy them new, even in standard sizes, they're going to run you like $100. But I got this pair used off Etsy and I think it was like 40 bucks. So definitely worth it. As always, thanks for watching and a huge shout out to my dad for helping me with this project. I couldn't have done it without him and his power tools. Be sure to subscribe and hit that little notification button so you don't miss it when the video series premieres of me actually using these lasts to make a pair of designer heels. It's going to be amazing and I can't wait to show you guys. So until next time, happy crafting and I hope your day is as beautiful as you are. So this is the old Hillborn sprint car, race car, intake manifold converted to electronic injection. So a normal you know, carburetor has four barrels like that. This has four two and an eighth inch, eight two and an eighth inch barrels. <laughs> you, know, the, you know, like your, a street car carburetor is like 600 CFM of airflow. Mm -hmm. This is 3,500.
Don't mind me. I'm just documenting.